Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Power BI training session with computer tutoring. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at years to date and how to use that in conjunction with the calculate function. What do I mean by that? Well, I've got a demonstration here. So I've got a, a matrix that's available. Uh, just going to click on my Zoom thing so I can show you that. So this matrix, if you can see, uh, for instance, it's actually using the fiscal year uh, going up. So um, I'll tell you what, let's just make a new one. I'll talk about fiscal year another time, just wefted your appetite. Let's do a new matrix. So down here, I've got a matrix. I'm just going to drag down here. And then from the dim date, I am interested in year. So if I drag year across and month. Uh, let's just get, get rid of that. And let's drill down again. So you can see my months are in order. Just as a quick, uh, let's just see if I can adjust the height. Brilliant. Now, if you're wondering how I'm doing all of this and you're wondering how on earth are you doing this, and please, please, please watch the other videos about creating a date table, sorting by month, all of that as well, if you're having particular issues as well. And it'll also take you through the relationships and how to form the relationships. I'll put the link down and the little thing on YouTube. If you're not, then just follow the whole channel. I think that'd be just the easiest thing. So the first things first. Now I've got um, fact sales just here. And in fact sales, I have a total. So I could drag total just over to here and then it would work that out already. I've taken the liberty of formatting total under modeling just at the top here. Am my zooming work? Here we go. So just under modeling here, I can click on the buttons, just drop down list here, and then it will format it in pounds and pence. But I want a cumulative value. Okay. Uh, I also want to actually see January if I had that's the purpose of a date table. Let's just see if we can sort that out. So if I go down here and go to month and I'm going to show items with no data. Brilliant. So you notice here now for the January that I have, oops, uh, let's just see how I get around with that one. Here we go. You notice here with the January now I have, because I've no sales in January that appears as a blank. So I want that to happen. So remember I went to month here. And then show items with no data just over here on the right side of the screen. All right, so let's get back to this year to date. So, how to do years to date? There's many other options for this. And once you've learned how to do this, you can do many other functions as well. But we're going to stick to dates YTD or calculating the total year to date. Now, what we're going to do for this one is we're going to create a measures table. So, what I want you to do is under the home tab, I'm going to click on enter data just here. And all I want to do is create a table. So down at the bottom here, I'm just going to type in key um, measures. OK, if I just zoom in a little bit so you can just see there. There we go. So I've just typed in key measures and then I'm going to just click on uh, load. Just zoom back a bit. There we go. So it's loading into the deck. So there's my key measures table. I've got column one in there. I'll get rid of that in a second, but I want to create a measure. So just over here on that right hand side, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go up to and click on new measure. So it'll create a new measure at the top. Now, um, now I can create uh, a measure. I'm going to use total a lot. And there's a lot of advantages to using a me measure for a total. It's the difference between what's known as an implicit measure and an explicit measure. An implicit measure is the one which you've done here. I've just dragged and dropped the total and it's just worked it out on its own. An explicit one basically is one that I've defined myself. So let's see what I mean. So say, for instance, I can say total revenue equals, and then I'm going to type in sum of the fact sales and the total. Here we go. And I press enter and I get total revenue. In fact, what I should do really here is it should have, shouldn't really have spaces in it. It makes little or no difference. Let me just zoom in so you can just see the function. So you see here, anytime now I want to refer to this sum function, I just refer to the total revenue. So now I've got that, I am going to swap a couple of things around. So I'm going to put total revenue here instead of total and then get rid of total here. And also I just need to format that. So I'm going to click on the format here down here and then up on the modeling just at the top. If you haven't seen it before, oh, let me just zoom in here. I can click on this drop down list and I can choose United Kingdom. There we go. So if I just click away here, just roll that up a bit. There we go. Let me just click away. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, that's, that's it. Brilliant. Now it's all working hunky dory. Brilliant. All right. So let's zoom back. So now I've got that measure. Anytime I want to refer to that, I can refer to it whenever I, you know, whenever I need to. So um, let's see if we can do another measure. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on those three little buttons on the right hand side of column one. Uh, here we go. And then I'm going to delete 
the column because I no longer need this one and just confirm it. So that's good. So we can get rid of that column. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add in the year to date calculation. So right click on key measures and go up to and click on new measure. And this way I know that my calculation, my formula is going to go into the key measures table. Uh, I'll show you how to swap it around if it happens to go into the wrong table in a second. So let's have a look here. So what I'm going to do is type in uh, total rev YTD and then equals. So let me just uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see these here. So, OK, so first thing I'm going to do a calculate and then I need an expression. And the expression in this case will be the measure total revenue. So I'm going to do shift and enter to bring that down to a new line and tab across. Oh, I always hate it when it does that. Let's get rid of the tool tips and tab across. That's a little better. Excellent. So now what I can do is I can type in the dates YTD function. Uh, so now it will calculate years to date. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to use the dim date table. Uh, that's it. And the date table here. That's great. And I have an option a year end date. We'll come to that in a second. But for the four we finish, I'm just going to finish off my formula there so you can see i've got the calculate function the first argument in the calculate function here is the total revenue measure we've just created and now i can include the dates ytd now there is a years to date function <coughs> Ooh, excuse me however by doing it this way you can start to get really into the depths of uh, doing calculate function like dates year to date uh, maybe doing last year's year to date or previous period and you can use other functions as well so let's just see if that works make sure i've got no errors it looks good so what i'm just going to do here let me just zoom back so here's the function just down here uh, the measure that's just been created just here so what i'm just going to do is drag that across and then when I look, I can see that the it's now doing it year to date. Uh, let me just format that by going up to modeling here, clicking on the drop down list and choosing uh, pounds and pence. And you can see if you've got a calculator, calculator out, 293,809 pounds add 311,370 uh, pounds uh, would equal a total of 605,000 uh, 179 pounds. So it just gives you a rough idea of how this works and it adds it all the way up to 2015 and then it's done there. So just a one, one little argument that's left in the dates YTD function. And for that, let's just zoom in a little bit. Uh, okay. So I don't know if you noticed if I click on here and then if I type in a comma just afterwards, I have a year end date. So I can put the year end date here. So this is in uh, the US format. So for all of us our UK colleagues, apologies out there. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get some comments from the US guys, but here we go. So say if my year ends the 3rd, which is March the 31st, and I can press enter. Now, when you look at the uh, formulas just here, it will do year to date all the way up to March, and then it will start again. So now 303,802 adds 306,467 makes 610,349. It goes all the way up to March the next year, and then it starts again. So that year end date is a great one, which if you want to be able to see that. Of course, you want to calculate fiscal year as well, maybe have April at the beginning, etc. Please keep an eye out for more videos uh, as well. We need more tutorials on that, and I'll show you how to do that. And also give you the exercise files for getting these date calendar, um, these date tables, these calendar tables, uh, so you can download and you can look at them yourself. I think that's it for the time being. It's all fantastic. Um, of course, the year to date is a great one for cumulative values. If I just zoom back, so year to date is a great one for cumulative values. So, say for instance, I added another sheet here let's make, move myself just down here a bit let's add a line chart here we go that's brilliant and then what i want to do is i can drag date into my axis here and then my year to date under my values uh yeah you can see that now it's sort of going all the way up so you can see this here um let's just for instance do this across one year so i'm just going to add a filter uh, and I'm interested in date, uh, relative date filtering. Uh, let's just do that for, let's have a look here in the last one year. Those years, there we go. That sounds good. Apply filter. 
You can see it there going up and down. So this is cumulative sort of values there. Of course, there's other ones as well, um, other functions that we can use to do cumulative values as well. So we can work out percentages, but then there'll be more videos for that. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you, need, you can understand how you can use the dates YTD function to calculate year to date. Just one more thing. <laughs> That's one little thing that I did forget. Um, uh, I did promise I'd show you in a second. Sorry, it's been longer than that. If your measure has gone into the wrong table. So what do I mean by that? Well, say, for instance, that when you right clicked, um, say, for instance, you were here and you were like you preferred using the modeling method, new measure and you created the measure, you know, my measure. And then you sort of did an average or whatever you decided to do um, of. So whatever measure, but at the moment, you see my measure now is in fact sales. So what you can do is still underneath the modeling tab here at the top. So you make sure you've got the modeling tab here selected. You can then click on the home table for whatever um, you want uh, that measure or whichever table you want that measure to be in. So for instance, let's do try that again. So I've got my measure here selected. I'm on the modeling tab here. I click on the drop down table and I choose key measures and it will move the measure from key me uh, from fact sales to key measures. That's the table I want it to be in there. That is it for now. Uh, I'll also show better ways of doing cumulatives as well. Just please keep a look, look out for more videos. There's only so much time uh, that we can do this and you, you don't want to be going through everything in this video. Thank you so much for watching again and look out for more. Remember to subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you've got anything out of this. It really would be appreciated uh, so much. Take care. Bye now.